Hey, I'm Zachary Cowan, the author of the Steady Daily Books, and thanks for joining me for a look at Doctrine and Covenants, section 43. So 43 is interesting. It starts off with the Lord sharing this, this principle about prophets that he's already shared before. See, early on in the church, they didn't realize that the only person who could get revelation for the whole church was the prophet. So you had lots of people trying to get it. In section 28, we have Hiram Page. Remember, he had that stone he was looking at trying to get revelation for the whole church. In section 35, when you had new congregations up in Kirtland, the Lord again reminded them. And now that they're in Kirtland, the Lord has to do it again. There's a woman named Hubble. And she's getting revelations and proclaiming things for the whole church. So again, in section 43, verses 2 through 7, the Lord reminds them that Joseph is the prophet. He's calling us to get revelation for the whole church. That he needs to be upholded by the prayer of faith. That he's going to make mistakes, but the Lord is with him, and directing him. And that the only way the church will get a whole revelation is through the prophet. Now, Look at verses 12 through 14, and the Lord gives some promises. For instance, this, if you, desires the, if you desire the glories of the kingdom, appoint my servant Joseph, sustain him. If you take care of him, provide some food and some raiment and some place to live, verse 13, you shall have the desires, the mysteries of the kingdom. The only way I know to get the mysteries of the kingdom is to have a prophet of God reveal them. I love supporting and sustaining prophets. How do you feel about the current prophet and his ability to unreveal, to reveal the glories of the kingdom, how great it is to be part of Christ's kingdom, and also to unfold the mysteries of it, the things that we don't understand. As we sustain a prophet, we get the glories of the kingdom in our lives, and we also get the mysteries of things revealed to us. I hope that you have felt that as you have followed a prophet. What glories, wonders has the prophet brought into your life? What mysteries have been solved as you've listened to a prophet? Now, the members of Kirtland, in their church accounts, they're having some unusual spiritual experiences. And we'll talk more about this in coming uh, sections. But right now, most members... When we go to church, they're not having fulfilling experiences. In fact, they kind of would describe their church experience as rather boring. So the Lord, in section 43, verses 8 through 11, gives some counsel on what he suggests members do in order not to have a boring experience at church, but to ramp it up. So go ahead, pause your video, check out verses 8 through 11, and look for what the Lord suggests we do to have a better experience at church. Hey, welcome back. Hope you found some great things like the Lord wants us to be instructed and edified and to learn and to grow and be sanctified and to feel all of this. But more than anything else, twice in verse 8, he says, I want you to act. And then in verse 9, as you learn and these teachings of the gospel, bind yourself to act. One of the great things that we're supposed to get out of church is revelation on what we're supposed to do. If we're going to church, but we're not getting feelings for direction for the next couple of days or for the next week of what God wants us to do, then we're missing the point of church and church meetings and all these other things and church classes that we go to. In verse 9, the Lord says, if you do this, you will be added upon. But if you don't do it, it will take away from you. See, if we do church correctly, it builds us. But if we're lazy about it, it actually harms our spirit. And takes us away. We end up going to church meetings and not feeling anything. And are not feeling moved or compassion. But the biggest thing is not for us to just go and feel things there. But to go take action because of it. And the Lord says, if you do this in verse 11, iniquity will be purged out of you. You will be prepared for the things that come. I wonder, what exactly is your favorite natural disaster? It's like... Which one fascinates you, captivates you? Is it tornadoes? Is it earthquakes? For me, it might be tornadoes because of like the whole show Twister growing up. But anytime I see a natural disaster or I hear about one, I always think of verse 25 of section 43. And it says this, How often I, the Lord Jesus Christ, have called upon you by the mouth of my servants and by the ministering of angels and by my own voice. That's a lot of people to call on. And by, check out all these voices, and by the voice of thunderings, and by the voice of lightnings, by the voice of tempests, by the voice of earthquakes, and the great hailstorms, 
by the voice of famines and pestilences of every kind, and by the great sound of a trump, and by the voice of judgment, and by the voice of mercy all the day long, and by the voice of glory and honor and the riches of eternal life, would have saved you with an everlasting salvation, but you would not. So the Lord says, look, to try to get people's attention, not only is he sending forth missionaries and other servants in the church, he is sending forth angels and he's calling himself and he says, I'm going to go ahead and use earthquakes and tempests and all these other natural disasters to try to get people's attention. And in verses 21 through 24, the message is the same. Well, what are these voices saying? Repent, remember that God is God. Come gather unto Jesus Christ, be protected by him and you will find strength. Well, among these voices is also our voice, the voice of his servants. And he gives counsel in verses 15 through 35 about how to make our voice and our testimony, our witness, just as powerful and meaningful and remember, memberful, just as memorable, memorable as a tornado or a natural disaster. All right, so go ahead, pause your video and go check out what does the Lord say in verses 15 through 35 about how to make our voice and testimony as memorable as a natural disaster. See you in a moment. Welcome back. What did you learn about how to make your own testimony and ministry and voice of warning about the gospel of Jesus Christ as powerful as a natural disaster? Remember that when we do this, Yes, we learn from others, but the Lord expects us to teach his gospel, to clean ourselves, to sanctify ourselves, to go forward, to spare not, to be willing to call upon people to do that. Remember that this is the gathering before the Savior's second coming. And in verses 34 and 35, as we do this, as we remember how important it is, we might be a little bit more serious as we teach and testify about the commandments and the blessings that come from gathering to Jesus Christ. They are great. Maybe they should sober us up with the commandments. Hey, thanks for studying. We'll see you next time.